But now we are on time crunch. Oh, Razor has a... a <laughs> I just realized as soon as I said that, I was like, Razor has a controller. And then I was like, I am immediately ruining the time crunch that we have to do. <laughs> Did you wait until I opened my mouth? No, I didn't see. <laughs> I was just like, it would be a funny noise. <laughs> I did clip the mic that time. <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, here, I can do... Oh no, that muted my mic. Uh, recording Ooh. volume 0.5, so then you can take it up or down. Oh. You know what, let's Technology. do 0.6. They look so small. Small waveforms. <laughs> okay. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Pointless Discourse with myself, Apocalypse, and D-Pain. Murahu, and Bite, which is hello, formerly and informally, and Kinyarwanda. I don't know where that is. Well, I know it's in Africa because that's where All the languages are. are, yeah. It sounds pretty. It's not on a map. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's because I just searched the language. It's the official language in Rwanda. Mm-hmm. Which is this tiny little speck, <laughs> right? It's like I didn't even realize it was part of the uh, world. It's um, it's like kind of the middle westish of uh, or sorry, south middle. I don't know. It's it's a real small. It's, it looks like the Rhode Island in Africa. <laughs> when you zoom out on the map, you're like, is it even really there? Pretty much. I didn't, <laughs> well, I haven't really studied, I almost said Africa, uh, I almost said Alaska, but uh, <laughs> words are hard today. Um, yeah. But no, it's there. And uh, before we start... I saw this really fun piece of news that I was like, oh man, this would be fun to share for the podcast. And then I lost it. And then I found something else that I think is really funny. And then I'm like, was this the original thing that I saw? Or <laughs> is <laughs> or isn't it? So I was like, All right, let's just say, let's just talk about this uh, for a second. Um, have you heard what is happening in Ukraine? Like not well. Yeah, I was gonna the say <laughs> there's a lot happening over there. Uh, I haven't seen new recent news about something. So they are Ukraine is raising money by uh, for anyone who sends them forty dollars, they will write a note on their artillery shells before firing them over to Russia. So, oh. I'm just going to send you this little screenshot of uh, just four examples. I figure the first one would be the funniest. <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So, and then, like, in the comments, uh, where is it? There was one. I don't know if it's still there. Uh, but there was a comment that said, uh, can you imagine just being destroyed by an uwu missile? <laughs> <laughs> that would definitely be a way to go. I also think it's very interesting that someone wrote a, like a happy anniversary to a couple. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's weirder if a friend was like, hey, for your anniversary, this is the gift I got you and sent you that picture. Or if the couple was like, you know, it would be really romantic for our 40th. <laughs> <laughs> like i mean it is yeah i think it is cute because it is donating 40 dollars for their 40th anniversary to help mm -hmm. the country but also i don't know how you come to that conclusion <laughs> there's a lot of people in the middle and south country of the country that i think would probably fit that they would understand better than i would yeah or me <laughs> completely fair but no that was that was some fun news uh other than that are there any announcements this week any any i know we have things to discuss and plan out for the podcast specifically but any fun stuff like reviews comments um, interactions on twitter 
Hey, if you want interactions on Twitter, I got a beef with our Twitter. <laughs> so, Hop knows this because I send it to her. But our our Twitter page will really likes Hop's tweets. And so, um, and the thing is, it doesn't even like my tweets. It. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, our Twitter page, when it gives, like, hey, notification, for me, the only time it says, hey, D-Pain, it's never my tweets. It's always, D-Pain liked a photo from this other person. I was like, but if I scroll down, it's just like, in case you missed Hotpocalypse's tweet. <laughs> Look at it. D-Pain liked a photo from, in case you missed Hotpocalypse's tweet. <laughs> <laughs> scroll down more. No, that's when yeah, we had some interaction. But then this last week uh, when we were recording this, when I tweeted uh, the thing that ever, when I said, weekly reminder, have everyone let Hot Fox know how cool she is. That's the only time it says, hey, in case you missed the Disney Fiends tweet because I added Hop. I don't know. I can't. I can't say what the algorithm thinks. What of did me. you pay? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't like the one that keeps uploading the things to it. Yeah, it's like, oh, you're putting so much pressure on me, making me post things. This other one, though, she's just here. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um. I also let's see real quick. Uh, as I as I lost the things. There we go. I want to go to the public site because they changed all their lineup things. Um, oh, yeah, so still, still the same on that. But uh, I was looking at the analytics, which was fun. Um, and we go to the audience. Uh, ever since we started doing video, <laughs> we lost our whole Spotify audience. Huh. <laughs> and isn't that the one platform that said they were going to start pushing for the video? Yep. But Amazon Music is just... I, hey, everyone listen to us on Amazon. Thank you. I don't know how to access the Amazon side of the podcast stuff anymore because I did it once and I never found out how to get there again. I think I have a link for you. I am clicking said link. Uh, once been the login. Yeah, right. I had to log into my Amazon to. I don't want to add a mobile number. Not now. Yeah, I said not now, and then it still let me through. Excuse me. Oh, dear, look at that. There's all these here. I still find it crazy that we start. We started this what in. Twenty twenty. Yeah, we're old people now, huh? I've been old. I went to a concert this last week, and uh, I knew I was going to feel old there because the actual members of the band for this uh, concert, I, I think the oldest is maybe 25. <laughs> and <laughs> so uh, they had, uh, before they opened the doors to try and speed things up, they were checking IDs to be able to put X's on hands for people that weren't allowed to buy alcohol and then giving wristbands to people that could. And all I saw were waves of people with X's on their hands. And they looked at my, <laughs> I had a mask on and they looked at my ID and they didn't tell me to take my mask off. And they're like, here's your wristband. I was like, yes, because nobody lies about being this age. I've hit that, <laughs> I've hit that number. Uh, when I was 18, people just looked at me and just said, you're fine. We don't need a car deal. <laughs> As one of my friends that I don't talk to anymore told me when I was 18, thought that I was 38. Oh, man. So I'm glad Benjamin now Button. <laughs> I have grown into the age that I look like. Yeah, I, but there were people in line that we did end up talking to for a bit, and I let them play the Guess How Old I Am game. Mm -hmm. And when they actually got the number right, they were like, what? Uh, one girl <laughs> started at, she thought I was 22. And I was like, That's nice. precious. <laughs> <laughs> you can be my friend for the night. <laughs> uh. Uh, but yeah, no, my favorite thing is, uh, well, I don't work with the my youth group anymore, but there was a time when we had the new batch, I think, of sixth graders come up, and like I just looked over at everybody, and I was just like, hey, child, 
and I was like, he's like, what? And I was like, how, how does it make you feel that your brother is now your, your youth leader? Yeah, I'm not his brother. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah. And he's just like, I don't know. It's whatever. And he's like, how does it make you feel to know that I was your brother's youth leader as well? And he looks at me and he's just like, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yup. <laughs> Oh, so. man. But yeah, time's fine. Time is zooming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Final Fantasy 2, 7 coming out. <laughs> I don't think that's the way the numbers go in that order. They, they do now. <laughs> the seventh installment of Final Fantasy 2. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, man. This is Final Fantasy 2, the one that no one likes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now everyone is push at, like, there's, like, a whole big push for the third Final Fantasy 7. It's also weird to say, is that it gets called Revengeance. Three Vengeance? No, Revengeance. <laughs> Are you familiar but pun. with... But pun! But it's... The first one is Rebirth. Oh, no, the second one's Rebirth. I forget what the first one's called. But they all start with R's. Yes, I understand. But you said Final Fantasy three, and then you said Revengeance. And I was like, but three Vengeance? Yeah, it's a good word. <laughs> it's a it's a but, pun. But the are you familiar with where the title Revengeance comes from? I have zero Final Fantasy knowledge. It's well, it's a meme, not from Final Fantasy. It's from Metal Gear Solid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, there's um, a Metal Gear Solid where you. All right, this only makes sense if you played any or seen anything of Metal Gear Solid. So I'll ask that first. Have you? Are you familiar at all? Okay, there's a character called Raiden that you play in the second game, well, the second Metal Gear Solid. Uh, there's many versions of Metal Gear, but anyway, you play that, and then he gets his own game where he's like, it's in the future where he's like a cyborg samurai man, mm-hmm. and uh, that is called Metal Gear. I think it's either Metal Gear Revengeance or Metal Gear Solid Revengeance. And it's just an angry robot man slashing everything. <laughs> but it's really exciting to play. Yeah, sorry That's that all. the joke just uh, flew right over my head. That's all good. It can't it can't fly over your head if you have no knowledge. It just wasn't even shot in the right area. <laughs> it was just in the wrong altitude. It was actually going into space <laughs> instead of <laughs> the air above my no, head. It's like you were standing to the left. I shot to the right. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just like, why do you no know, understand? <laughs> but um, but now we are on time crunch. Oh, Razor has a... a <laughs> I just realized as soon as I said that, I was like, Razor has a, a controller. And then I was like, I am immediately ruining the time crunch that we have to do. <laughs> I, I thought Razor a had a controller. Or yeah. are they... I don't know. I could yeah, be misremembering. Like, doesn't look very comfortable. I'm trying to think if there's any other fun stories I want to share before we start. Um, I held a child today. Was the child? Uh... It was not the niece. Okay, <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, in uh, as a transition over to what we're talking about today, uh, did you steal said child and uh, write your name on its shirt to try and claim? It? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was it was kind of more of the lines of um, the mom had to go onto the stage for to to help lead the worship or the music tonight or this morning. And, uh, and like, so me, I was talking to one of the people and she like comes up and just like, I need one of you guys to hold my child because my husband went to the bathroom and hasn't come back and I got to get on the stage. And if he doesn't show up in 30 minutes and I'm like, I have held my niece to be trained for this. And then the child's like, I don't even know if she's like one yet. And she's just like, what the dump is this? <laughs> <laughs> and then, then her dad came and was like, here you go. Take your child. I got to go to work. <laughs> okay. And I realized I said that story without the preface of, in better off Ted, Linda stole a baby. <laughs> yeah. Episode f- four? No. F- five? Three, f- six? Because four is the one that you really liked the writer for. 
Yeah. Oh, and that we just, we just scroll up. Oh yeah, through the wiki. Oh, I don't have the wiki. I was just looking at the oh the questions. Yeah. Um. It was five. Five. Okay. Yeah, because that's the one where the same thing as the ears. <laughs> the Mickey and the ears. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, but yes, so another episode of Better Off Ted. We're on to episode eight. And this one had another completely different vibe than the last episode. I, I think I liked this one a little bit more. Yeah, this one, I felt like the plot lines were better fleshed out and they had a better flow into each other, I guess I would say, with the way that it all came together. But we shall roll dice to see who gets to do the synopsis of this episode. You can just have it. <laughs> Have you done the, like the last three? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Very fair. All right. I, no, we gotta. We have to. We, we have, have to, to honor the dice as I try to find the episode. <laughs> there it is. All right. Um. You know what? I'm gonna get a completely different die. Oh, not one of the usual three. Yeah, because they keep betraying me. Let's see. Out of the bag. The first D20 I see. Oh, this one looks like a fog cloud. So, that wasn't it. That's a die that keeps running away. Come back here. It grew legs? What? It grew yes. legs and ran away? <laughs> yes. Get back in here, holding. Okay, here we go. That is like the most middle of numbers that I could have rolled. <laughs> All right, what single digit did you roll? I rolled two this week. You rolled two dice? Two digit. Two oh. digit number. Uh, 13. Oh, 11. Ha ha. <laughs> Get back in the bag, you die. Let's see. The first one I picked up, what would it have been? Oh, that was a nat 20. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I switched. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So, in this episode, what we basically have, uh, I'll just fill in with a little opener because I did have a question for you based on the very beginning. Because in the okay. beginning of most of these episodes, they have a little gadget or technology that they've researched or they're researching. So, we open up with them introducing a chip that you can supposedly install in your brain for dietary purposes to make things taste different. We'll get to that later. Mm -hmm. And then it cuts to uh, Phil and Lem trying to kind of pack up and leave for the... Or, no. Before that, after the board meeting, Veronica mentions that she, her driver has passed away. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's not funny that they're dead. Okay? <laughs> 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 With context, it'll be funny. And then Linda offers to be friendly to say that she'll give her a ride home. And Veronica keeps looking at Linda's like, how much do I owe you? And Linda's like, no, we're friends. And um, Linda and Veronica spiral into their thread for this episode in which Veronica is like, I finally have someone I can talk to because you said we are friends. And you know what friends do? Friends open up to each other. So then Linda is faced with the onslaught of everything Veronica has ever thought or felt for like her entire life because apparently she's never had anybody. And then you have on the other side, Phil and Lem are getting ready like they have these uh, garment bags and they're like trying to get ready and leave for the night and Ted's like hey Rose is out of town with her mom uh, can we like hang out go to a beer I have all this free time that I'm not used to having and Phil and Lem are kind of Phil wants to invite him and Lem is like no you don't mix your boss with your personal life because it never changes your boss is still going to be your boss you have to keep that separate and Phil's like no 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 it's fine and Ted curious about what they're doing goes to reach for one of the garment bags and they start like hissing at him like don't touch that, <laughs> don't touch that. <laughs> <laughs> and Ted gets confused but eventually convinces them to let him get invited into uh, the basement and you get a whole list of all these different clubs that they've tried joining and the one that they that stuck for them is LARPing essentially but they call it medieval mm -hmm. fight club mm -hmm. and they have all the different tiers and based on like the fight club and how well you do during the fight club you get to different tiers and things like that and naturally, Ted has to be Ted. <laughs> Ted just, he can't turn off being Ted. And then you follow that whole thread of his complications with, mixed in like some of Ted's personal life, mixed in with Phil and Lem and his relationship with Ted and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Isn't there the line where I think Lem says like, why do you have to be good at everything you touch? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or something like that. And Ted's just like, I don't understand what you mean. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, but yeah, I think that's the general synopsis, and then we can kind of dive into things with the questions I have. Do you have anything else you wanted to add in? Uh, no, I think everything else will kind of roll out as we like can talk through it. Okay, so then, yes, my first question for you. If you could get a chip in your head to make everything taste like something, would you do it? Is it just have everything taste like one thing? Well, the way that they advertised it in the show was uh, they said you could get a chip and plant it into your brain so that everything tasted sweet. So, like, for dietary reasons, if you don't like vegetables, you don't make vegetables taste sweet. And, like, I know I definitely wouldn't want everything to be sweet. Yeah. <laughs> But I don't think I could personally handle everything tasting like one flavor. Yeah. Like, especially with me, like, exploring cooking, I love the different tastes. Like, I, I'm a dip a dip dip. <laughs> one of the meals <laughs> I'm making tomorrow is, I don't know, it's in a Vietnamese dish, and I never made Viet, Vietnamese food. And so I'm like, I don't know. I'm excited to try that. It's a lot of pork. <laughs> 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 but uh but yeah no it's like it just thing about the sweetening side is like pretty much i need to like caramelize sugar and mm. then i pour that in there but it's pretty much just to give it like a darker look but i don't know it's like if uh if i had everything taste the same i don't know that just sounds boring because, yeah i like, think it would I work like traveling for- yeah, I think it would work for me as a diet if everything tasted the same, because then I wouldn't want to eat, because it would be like, I know what this is going to be like. What's the point? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's that, and then, like, there's also, um, brain just died. <laughs> um, I don't know, because, like, so this, this just reminds me of something, like, I think it was two or three weeks ago where we had um, a group come to our church. We, we knew them for years from Myanmar. I think it was Myanmar. Whatever it, it was, whatever Burma changed their name to. Because <laughs> I know there's Myanmar and Myanmar, like, and they're like right next to each other. Mm-hmm. And I'm getting confused because I'm not looking at a map. But uh, I was just sitting there and I was like, oh man, I like, I like the food from that area. And I was like, I really want to go and get some of that. And plus it helps them out. But then there was, like, these other two guys, because we had training afterwards, and I was like, oh, I'm just going to go to Wawa. And I was like, why? It's like, it's going to be not, nothing really, like, they're not going to give you something super exotic. They know who they're trying to get this food to. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, like, this exotic stuff is more just Hollywood, like, extremes and imagination <laughs> the more you look into it it's like a lot of it's just rice fish and chicken yeah <laughs> <laughs> but, but like uh, i don't know and like i know where i made my mistake because like i was i was like oh no it's like it's probably just like rice and like i was in my head i was about to say like chicken but fish is what came out of my mouth mm-hmm. and they're like uh, i don't i don't want fish they, and like looking i was like they were just looking for the excuse mm. and then but I went over, as soon as I walked over, they're like, oh, yeah, here's curry chicken. And I was like, yes. <laughs> Easy yes. <laughs> I did that. And then, like, I I gave them a bunch of money, but I also took probably way too much. I should have ate one sitting. <laughs> and I was like, I was so happy. But I'm like, man, I want to go to your guys' church. Do you guys eat like this? <laughs> and then uh, the joke I was telling one of my friends was like, hmm, do you have any desperately single people? <laughs> I'll... <laughs> I will, I will do that for food. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll marry for food. We'll marry for good food. But yeah. uh, but yeah, like but the food, like the stuff like there was super good. But like compared, like curry chicken to, like, I don't know, like it's just another chicken dish. I don't know, mainly because I've just been cooking a lot from like Asian food. I'm like like chicken tongue, tongue cocks. Oh wow, I can't talk. The like deep, pretty much like deep fried chicken with curry mm-hmm. and my brain can't remember the words but it's just like those are two completely different tastes and i don't think i would want a chip i don't think you were also expecting this question to go as long as it did <laughs> nope but uh the other thing i was gonna say is i did think it was funny that they said that invasive brain surgery is still um rated higher than diet and exercise <laughs> understandable (laughs) one of them is done (laughs) yeah they're like invasive brain surgery a lot of or elective brain surgery a lot of people aren't into it but (laughs) (laughs) 
I would still pick that over diet and exercise. All right. No, like I knew with these episodes, like I should start doing, like I said, more open ended questions. So then we have fun chat time instead of just going, yeah, that happened in that show. Because <laughs> it does, this it's doesn't fun. have as strong as threads. And I knew that going in, but I knew mm-hmm. that I, I figured that we could do something short and like not so serious like the sitcom before we go into movie marathon. <laughs> yeah. But like, that's the thing, like where uh, Hop is the one that. She comes up with the questions and, and the quizzes, and I just make sure the episode gets out on time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next question. Were you, surpri- <laughs> Were you surprised that Ted took to Medieval Fight Club so well? Um, well, I knew he would take to it because that was kind of the name of the episode and he was in the, the image. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, um, well, like, at first, like, he... He was he hesitant. Yeah. yeah. He was just like, oh, okay, you guys have fun. And then they're like, oh, it's our street cred. <laughs> and and then it's just Yeah, because like, Phil says, what is it, something like, in order for them to move up, they needed to recruit more people that were good at Medieval Fight Club. Mm-hmm. So that's why Phil wanted to bring him, because Phil was like, I know Ted could give us, make us look cooler. Yeah. Then it backfires. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, uh... But not like it kind of like the combat side of it, like um, I guess the uh, I don't know. It's not like he, they really shown him not having any like I guess like training or something like that. But hold on, I gotta just scan your questions real quick to make sure. Okay, because there's a little bit later where he just comes up like like with no context. Once again, I feel that's like just Ted's storylines right now, where it's just like out of context sentence to other co-worker to, to Linda or Veronica and everyone's just like yeah okay and just like I almost killed a man in the basement today <laughs> last night <laughs> yeah cause the last episode he was like I have to go to the strip club with a bunch of 50 year old men and Linda's like what, what yep. happened <laughs> <laughs> yep and uh yeah it's still unclear if he actually ever ever went I uh, assumed yes. Yeah, but like I, I don't know. It also seemed like he was tired of them. Well, he was tired, but then came back to where everyone was partying in his office, and he's like, "Okay, get out of here!" and (laughs) wants to clean the butt print off his (laughs) off his desk or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. For me, I like. I was surprised, not so much that he took to it very well, but that he, it felt like it didn't take much effort for him to go from like, oh, this can be your you guys thing to like, you know what? I'm 100% in it. I'm, he went as far as like, oh, I'm going to add more days. I'm going to force all the yeah. other clubs out of the place. We're going to do this all the time. He ordered his own uniform. He did. He did. He, uh, he put a lot of energy into it. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, I do have a question talking about it later. Okay. So then we'll flip it back to the other storyline. Do you think you could handle Veronica's emotional dumping? Not with a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> which which line was your favorite? I know which one is mine of what she admits. Oh, I, I like the first one. The like I still like the first one. It's just like, oh, yes, my, my driver died. And it's like, oh, thank you. My When she's coming back with the... All the stuff. And it's like, yeah, my grandmother died. And she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. You're driving your grandmother? Two people at once? Two. <laughs> There's on the lines of that. And then, oh, then there was something else. The housekeeper. And then yeah. you find out that uh, the grandmother was the housekeeper and chauffeur. <laughs> and, uh, and so. Yeah, because I think it goes. Um, yeah, because she's like. Uh, uh like you said she says those two and then linda she carried like a heavy box up the stairs Mm -hmm. and that's why veronica mentioned oh no after she carries the box upstairs veronica's like i'll go get us some wine but we have to pour it (laughs) ourselves because my housekeeper died yes (laughs) and and linda's like when did that happen this week and then linda's face is like the math meme where she's like her driver her grandmother Mm -hmm. her housekeeper (laughs) (laughs) But my favorite one, which I was like, oh, what's the one that repeated? It's the one with the sister. 
That is, that's my favorite one, <laughs> where she admits to uh, feeding her sister pudding in her sleep so that her sister would gain weight and be the uglier sister. And, and then, then you fl- at the end. <laughs> Linda's trying to sleep and Veronica's on the phone. Yeah, my sister's in town for grandmother's funeral spoon feeding pudding yeah. to her sleeping sister. And on she's the couch. just like rubbing the throat. Just like, here you go. <laughs> uh, it, was yeah. also, it was also very enjoyable to see um, Linda try and figure out how to handle Veronica after liquor because they tried to write the storyline that like Linda, you know, after so much wine was like, I don't know how you're still sober. Like I, this is so much wine. And Veronica's like, oh, I processed liquor differently. And then goes from like sitting straight up to just and slamming just, her. <laughs> and just like, she's dead. <laughs> and then Linda goes and like tucks her into bed and was like joking about, was she joking about punching Veronica? She's yeah, like, you want one of these? <laughs> yeah. And then Ronnie just goes, Linda. <laughs> 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 and then starts doing the emotional dumping. Yeah. Whereas Linda is, is freaking okay. out. She's Linda's like, I know too much. I know too much. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, I could. Oh, I thought you were going to like fire me and get rid of me. I haven't thought of that. Hmm. Well, we're letting you go. And Linda's yeah. like, what? And, she's, and Veronica's like, is yeah. what I would say. Right. Yes. And just like the constant jokes of like, haha, I gotcha. But uh, yeah, there, oh, there was something else. Let me look at my notes. There was something with Veronica. Um, yeah. Oh. Now I remember it was the thing, <laughs> the picture I sent you earlier, uh, this week. Oh, the like, meme <laughs> episode eight. Oh, let's see if I can find it real quick. It was uh, I could probably just look it off on my phone. Oh, uh, it was. It's two people on a slide, and it's just like the. It's just funny how oversharing and keeping things inside both lead to feeling bad, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, well, we got a we got both sides in this episode. That we did. Oh, yeah. Alright, so then back to Ted. I re- I I remember last episode I wrote it so we were talking about each storyline and now I'm doing the back and forth, but it's okay. We're having yeah. fun. You we're wrote, you wrote the questions, so uh, I'm just here to follow along and give color commentary. Uh did you expect Ted to blackmail Phil and Lem? Not really. Yeah, that one was the one that I was like, oh, I knew he was going to be good at the club and get obsessed with it because he gets obsessed with everything, but I did mm-hmm. not expect him to turn on them. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, it, it was just like interesting too because it's just like, it. I guess like it that came off as blackmail while like he kind of does the same like he he treated the club kind of similar to how he treats his job Mm -hmm. and it's just like in his job like re reworking schedules and making sure things are open and closed and and everything makes sense like in his position to make sure that the job can be done smoothly but as a extracurricular activity i heard that one (laughs) yeah um my windows are open i traded children for cars oh there it's it's still going um and uh yeah it's just it comes comes off especially like i think one of them had like a special event or something like it that was night. someone's mom's birthday yeah i think it was phil's mom's because i think phil was like is it weird if i bring my mom to mfc that, yeah, I think and so. lem was like yes <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. so yeah that's uh like it like it makes sense but i wasn't expecting it it was like hmm and and i the i guess that that line of pretty much what phil says like no you can't have your boss join join your stuff because like your boss is never your your friend or i forget the let's see is the line up here um let's see hanging out with a boss could be a bad idea streak head i Bosses and employees shouldn't hang out. It's like the ventriloquist trying to be friends with the dummy. <laughs> it's, uh, and at the end of the day, you know who's sleeping in the suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> and that's at the end of the episode. But uh, 
But yeah, no, it's pretty much says something on the lines of that. Which is just like, no, there's bosses should not be friends with the employee, or rather, employees shouldn't be friends with their bosses because, like, yeah, that this stuff, like, well, well, if you like your job. <laughs> Yeah, because I think what Ted does the, oh, if you're not going to show up tonight, then I want that report at 9 a.m. tomorrow yeah. on the dot. And they're like, it's not ready. And he's like, if only you had an excuse, then I'll work on the report tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, Ted. Not good Ted. Bad Ted. <laughs> yeah. Hanging out with Veronica a little too much. <laughs> yeah. And then my follow-up question. Uh, I'm sure this is an automatic yes for you, but was it less surprising to you when Veronica did blackmail Linda? <laughs> No, that, that seemed a little bit more par for the course. Yeah. <laughs> but I like her temper tantrum. Like, <laughs> uh, Ver- Veronica as a character is very funny. Is she still your favorite character? Currently. Currently. Yeah. I don't know. It's like, it's just, she's just such a an extreme to where everyone else is like, okay, just don't. Don't tip the don't tip the scales. Just just keep everything loosey goosey. <laughs> yeah, they like. Point. I understand what she's like, so we're gonna make sure we're right here. Yes. <laughs> don't, like, don't rock the boat. <laughs> <laughs> but then, like the other thing is, like you can say that, and she has like, since she's so corporate, she doesn't understand like, like metaphors, <laughs> like that aren't business related. Yeah, she she just wants like the complete straight and narrow. And I did all mm-hmm. think it was very funny when they try to come to the conclusion and Linda's like, you know what, to be a friend, we need to both share things with each other. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and Linda goes, one time when I was a kid, Marta goes, I hate this. You're overbearing. You're yeah. oversharing. You're putting too much on me. And Linda's like, I didn't even... <laughs> start- <laughs> didn't even start yet. <laughs> Where I was like, I don't think we can be friends anymore. <laughs> It was that easy. So. When Veronica divulged what Veronica said, like, I got my fa- uh, grandfather deported from the country. Mm-hmm. I feed my sister to make her fat. Like, she, <laughs> some real stuff that's, like, a lot for a person to be have to be, like, trusted with. Mm-hmm. And she would call her, but, like, basically every hour of the day, like, oh, I forgot to tell you something else about my life. Mm-hmm. There's a comment I would say, but I see it's one of the questions on here. okay and then so with all of that uh when did it stand out to you that ted was using mfc for coping with rose being with her mom uh it didn't until the end (laughs) until the very end yeah because like because like rose like i understood like rose was like with her mom and everything and then there was like all that stuff but it was just like i didn't like it, it wasn't really like connecting because it was it could have been like i slept very terribly this whole week <laughs> and uh it was just that <laughs> that thread didn't connect but i still don't think i would connect it either because it's just like oh rose is just calling on the phone not that big of a deal i did like the line where he he was on the, he was on the phone uh with bros and was like, all right, bye, Rose. Love you, honey. And he hangs up and then, like, Ted curses her out. And Phil and Lem were like, she's seven. He can't yeah, say yeah, that seven. about her. He's like, no, her mom. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, that's, that's a joke I would like to make. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for an excuse and be like, hey, you can't say that. That's a kid. Yeah. When you clearly know. But... Was no, it ice I, cream for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was ice cream for breakfast, staying up past curfew. Like a, yeah. a lot of little like tiny things, but he was like she's so spoiled. She's spoiling her cuz she never sees her. And then she, uh but yeah, I think it connected for me maybe the second or third time that he complained about Rose and her mom because he went mm-hmm. right I, th- I feel like there was a point in the like midway through the episode he went from like i can't believe she's doing this and then turns to phil and them is like we're going to mfc tonight i'm gonna go win i'm gonna become like the best mm-hmm. fighter and i was like oh he's not okay and then you have kind of the stuff at the end with linda and he's like he finally kind of like opens up about you know being grumpy about everything and how rose is being handled yeah one thing the line is like uh just like yeah she gets she does all the fun stuff where one of where i have to be the actual parent 
I am the bad guy and she gets yeah. the run off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, it's uh. But yeah, in in the end though, it's like I don't know. I I haven't gone through that, but it's like from what I heard from people <laughs> going through that, like they kids that have gone through the divorce and like one of the parents are like that like i don't know it seems like there's a lot more value on that person like growing up was perceived as the bad guy <laughs> like as long as they're i don't know i don't think ted is a a terrible parent from all the little bits that we've seen but it's just like he has to be the one that says no you can't yeah, have that or no yeah. you can't do that mm-hmm. yeah the be responsible to make sure that Rose is growing up and it's just like, I don't know, like you might not see it now as she's seven, but like when she's older and like develops, you might see like if you don't screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> don't screw up the teenage years, then she'll thank you later. <laughs> yeah. But from from all I heard from uh from parents uh who have teenage daughters, like you just just hope for the best. <laughs> You're like, you just, just try not to make him mad. <laughs> All right. And then uh, this is kind of like the ending of the episode. What did you think of Linda's chance uh, in the MFC? I think they just recreated Ted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just not a big fan of the outfit they put her in. I was like, why did they put her in? Like, like everybody else that I remember being there was kind of more in. It felt like they were going like it for like. Zena, yeah, <laughs> warrior princess vibe. Whereas everybody else was there. Were there other women in the club? Yes, I think so. I can't remember how they were dressed, but I feel like I would have noticed if there were a bunch of Xena war princesses like running around. Yeah, yeah. No, I think they were mainly dressed like kind of in similar garb of everyone else. Mm-hmm. It's like for the most part, everyone was kind of dress the same like the poofy shirt yeah the, the well, except of... for um oh the dude that they get at the end where he's like no man i can't do this anymore oh the uh the like retired best fighter yeah and that's the one that ted almost kills and then they're like all right ted we voted you out of the club <laughs> you well, have some oh, issues that's uh the is like Ted, just want to let you know, we you have now become king of Underground uh, Medieval Fight Club. But you we also voted, and you died, so you can no longer come back to Medieval Fight Club. And he's like, I'm not coming back, guys. It's all good. And then Phil's like, just to make sure, when we say you're dead, you're yes. not allowed back. <laughs> so it's like, it's mm-hmm. fine. But it was pretty cute when Linda said that she was stressed out with all the Veronica stuff, that she was like, I, I don't know how to deal with all this. And they are like, mm-hmm. we have an idea. And they had their own little private MFC for her. Mm-hmm. But yeah, she definitely went all in on it. Yeah, it's like, I think you just traded out. Well, I guess the one benefit is that she's not their boss. Mm-hmm. But from, uh, I guess, a mental state, same <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, because she still works with them, and she's still supposed to get like feedback and stuff from them. But she mm-hmm. can't quote unquote tell them what to do in the way that ted does yeah like you can't give them uh, a report to have done in the in the next few <laughs> for the next day mm-hmm. uh, yeah yeah uh, like i remember that was like the last thing that shows up and i'm like okay wasn't expecting that <laughs> her like, scream running with the sword yeah. i don't even remember who she's fighting but I forget too, but I do remember it, like it wasn't the full club down there. It was pretty much just like the handful of them. <laughs> Ted ruined it. <laughs> yes, Ted ruined the club. Yeah, this was also the episode. Like, so I think it was a couple weeks ago, uh, where I didn't realize that Hulu was playing better, <laughs> better off Ted in the background on my on my computer while I was doing the cooking stream. And then I was like, oh, hold on, because I thought there was some weird audio stuff, and I unmuted it, and I just hear, like, I don't even remember the line, but it was just like, what the heck is that? And I looked, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> 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 so, but yeah, I, I'm now caught up to what my computer watched ahead of me. Yeah, your, computer, just... knew, your computer knew where you needed to catch up. Yeah. It was like, you'll like this episode. We'll, <laughs> we'll get up to this point. <laughs> 
Is this what it's like when people uh, are in a relationship and the one uh, <laughs> one of the couple uh, watches, watches ahead of the ahead other one? <laughs> like, but we're going to watch it together. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, but also I realized I didn't bring up, I, I kind of enjoy, but also don't completely understand the ranking system of the MFC. So clearly mm-hmm. there was the King, which Ted was making fun of. Cause he was like, Oh, it's the head of it. But then he like comes out in his robe and his crown yeah. and is like, per my decree, <laughs> like mm-hmm. in his full official voice. So what did, uh, Phil and Lem start out as? Were they squires? Oh, I think so. So I yeah, don't, I don't know if they were squires. I thought they were like upper peasants, upper <laughs> peasants, something like that. Yeah, it was like I don't think I don't think they were squires. I think they were like right below that. And then they know. brought Ted, and then they got some street cred, so they moved up and were allowed to participate in fights. But then mm-hmm. Ted beat them, beat Lem terribly. And then Phil was like, I forfeit. So then they both became jesters. Or jesters, yeah. And which Phil Phil was like, joke's on you. I'm using all my same material from last week. <laughs> I was like, how is Phil start, still part of this club when he can't even, like, <laughs> participate? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so, what did Ted, did they ever give Ted an official title as he was moving up the ranks? Or did it just go from him, like, being also an upper peasant to, like, he earned king, and then they were like, but you're not allowed back? Yeah, well, like, after he fights Lem and Phil, he, I think that's when he becomes a knight or a squire. Okay. And then, because, like, the, the, I don't even remember how he gets up into the, to the fights at first, because, like, I think Lem and Phil... They're just like, I don't know, do you want to join? And they're just like, how do I get in there? And then, and then like, they pull some strings and then allow him to fight. And mm-hmm. then that's how he, he gets He just up. beats everybody that yeah. faces him. And then, and then I think the last fight is the, the retired, like, guy from the MFC. Yeah, he's like, I've got kids now, I can't be doing that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh. Yeah, everyone's just like, he's back. <laughs> he was the one that looked the most like a warrior, too. <laughs> yeah, he looked like someone that could hurt somebody. And then Ted just ran in, and everyone's yeah. like, oh, God. <laughs> it feels like Ted cheated. Like, he, there was supposed to be a sign for them to fight. And yeah. And he the, just went in. The whole, you know, like, three, two, one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's a... Uh, I'm trying to scan through the thing and just see if there's... If they have... Uh, any kind of title yeah but it, it seems like they focus more on the linda veronica story okay and that's fine that is a fun story mm-hmm. so then here's my final question for you out of everyone in the show who do you think needs the most therapy yes <laughs> <laughs> um i'm trying to think who would like actually partake in it like who would actually get the most out of it I think I, Ted and Veronica I, would do mm-hmm. it if they told each other, you know what, I'm going to become the most mentally well after this. Yeah. Like, they'd have to make a competition out of it. I, I think that's how they get in, but I think Ted would actually get a lot out of it. Because he would actually try. Well, I think just just because anytime anyone gives him a little bit of like, information or something, he's just like, oh. And, oh like, yeah. and I think he would, like without him realizing it, would probably get a lot of benefit from it. Mm-hmm. I think Veronica would probably just keep flipping the tables until the person's like, okay, you, you obviously don't want to be here. Yeah. Every time that they would say, you tell me more about that. And she's like, no, I'm going to turn around and talk about other things I want to. And they'd be like, but it sounds like we should talk about this. And she'd be like, nope, mm-hmm. nope. <laughs> just keep dodging it back and forth. But I also feel like Linda would be that way. Because I feel like yeah. anytime Linda has been faced with anything that's more than just something easy to solve she's like i'm gonna cope this way i'm not gonna talk about it Mm -hmm. yeah it's uh uh like i 
I don't know enough about, well, I know a little bit about counseling, but not from like an actual patient side of it. (laughs) I also think uh, Phil could really use it. (laughs) (laughs) Because doesn't he say a comment about like how he wishes his wife could like run off to wherever Ted's wife is or something like that? It's just every episode something (laughs) with his wife. And I'm like, I feel sorry for her. I hope I hope she's doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, and I think Phil would get a lot out of it because Phil likes to word vomit a lot. Mm. He doesn't always listen, but if you give him the right motivation, like in the early episodes where he gets the fake prize, then he like flips the script. He's like, "I'm no longer like sad about this. I'm a confident person who screams randomly." Mm. Also, like, I guess he's healed from that, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank goodness. <laughs> if it was like every time he came on the screen, he screamed once, yeah, that would get tired fast. <laughs> but yeah, with the right little like treats, I think you can convince Phil to actually like do something to help himself. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like Lem would just, if everyone went to counseling, he would have, uh, or therapy, he would have uh, a lot more peace of mind. He, yes, he's kind of like the most rational but he's also the most stubborn out of everyone i think yeah part of me wonders if he has to be like that because of the people he is surrounded by (laughs) he's like if i'm not the one that like puts the line in the sand then everyone's just gonna lose their minds and go crazy Mm -hmm. around me yeah that could be pretty much it yeah trying to think of everyone else like that whole team like because we only meet them when they're trying to get ted his job back Mm-hmm. And like, there's oh, this. the other scientists. Yeah, and there's the one that just is like, heck with you guys, <laughs> and just, just bails. <laughs> I also like the one that she's like, <laughs> Linda's over, and you know, it's very clear Linda and Ted have some chemistry. But then mm-hmm. that scientist, she's like, do you think Ted like and I have chemistry? And Linda's like, what? She's <laughs> like, I know you're jealous of us, Linda. And Linda's like, who? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> To be honest, that whole office needs a little a little therapy, especially after uh, <laughs> dog space car sport click <laughs> episode. Oh, yes. with uh, <laughs> You can't sit with them. What do you yeah. mean? We're all people. No, they're space people. You can't sit with space people. You're a cat person. <laughs> yes. Oh, it was cat, not sport. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I wonder what Lem and Phil, what group they were put in. I'm also, yeah, I wonder if they weren't put into one because they don't, they don't seem to have cubicles. I wonder if it's just that floor. <laughs> that was, if Linda made the suggestion and then they ended up being the guinea pigs. Yeah. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, moving forward with that. Yeah, I'm but you think s- of all the other characters in this show that we've met. Rose would have to be the counselor. Rose would be the counselor. She was very good at firing people. She was able mm-hmm. to relate to them on a level they understood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much tells Ted every time she's not with her mom that, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think there really is any other character that sticks out. I wonder what's happening to Linda's ex boyfriend. <laughs> he showed oh, up and now yeah. he's just gone. I don't think he needs therapy. Um, he, he escaped. Yeah, he made it out. I Not like so how. Much from Linda, just from Meridian's bubble of unstable unstability. <laughs> yeah, I did think it was funny when he was trying so hard to be like a nice person. It was like, it's nice to meet all your co workers. They're all such nice people. And then like Veronica and Ted would start saying things and he'd be like, what? You guys actually like do that and because he mistook them for a couple and they were like no absolutely not we hate each other we're just competing <laughs> to sell uh paper and they're like and he's like oh, okay yeah. back at you <laughs> <laughs> get me out of here <laughs> so i decided to check on the wiki it looks like the writer and director for this episode are completely different than every previous episode that's why it was a good one <laughs> So, out of the episodes we've watched so far, uh, is four still your favorite? Uh, I'm trying to... Do you have the thing where you can see who wrote what? 
Yes, I can send you the wiki link. I think I may have found it. I'll just find out. Oh, I'm on a different wiki. Um, so far, yeah. Um, Forge is just good. The Forge, <laughs> like, writing was really good. And I liked the way that the humor, I think, plays out where it's still funny, but it doesn't detract from everything. Mm -hmm. But I think I like episode eight a lot as well because it kind of has the same feeling where it didn't feel like they forgot about the plots. Mm -hmm. And that the humor was just to help make the plot uh, easier to deal with. Because it really, at the core of it, this episode was about how, you know, it's hard to erase the boundary of, like, boss to friend. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the boss is like, well, you know, I, like Lem says, like, I, I, I hold the strings. I tell you mm -hmm. what to do for your job. And that's a hard thing to, like, forget about. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, I'm just looking through this all now. <laughs> and it's like, uh, you know, Paul Lazarus was. The other thing I'm just sitting here wondering about is like, since, um, oh, wait a second. Okay, there. Oh, I wonder if uh, the writer and director for the first two episodes of this are related. Because they're written by Victor Fresco. And directed oh, directed by Michael, by Michael Fresco. Fresco. Um, but uh, I'm just looking through this, and I'm I'm curious because the first three episodes are directed by by the same person, Michael Fresco, and then well, the next episode, number nine, uh, is also. Uh, oh my goodness! Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so I clicked on Victor Fresco's wiki, and it says Victor Fresco is brothers with director Michael Fresco and television drama writer Rob Fresco. So when they tell you nepotism runs deep in Hollywood, <laughs> it's, it's everywhere. Uh, Michael Fresco has, doesn't have really anything Not on Not much of a wiki, no. Um, but I'm curious because like the first couple episodes are pretty good for Better Off Ted um, of just the setup of the show yeah and but like michael comes back and directs the last uh episode 11 and 12. yeah it looks like michael he has a list of like a bunch of different shows so maybe he was doing a lot at the same time mm -hmm. oh it looks like it says um for michael frescoes he directed nine episodes of the series that was written by his brother but he doesn't have a lot of writing rights or writing credits throughout the episode as far as i've seen victor yeah, it's kind of like <laughs> two in the first season. Three. Three, according to Wikipedia. Yeah. Oh, well. But yeah, it's, um, it'll be interesting. Now I'm curious. Hold on. Let's. Okay, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I'm just wondering, season one. Let's just go there. Please go to season one. All right, thank you. Um, directed, okay, written by Charlie Day and Rob, Charlie and Rob, Charlie and Rob. I was going to say, I know the yeah, early the, seasons are like the all main written three. By, yeah. All right, so in season two, there's one episode. It's all directed by pretty much the same person <laughs> in the second season, except for the first episode, which is by by um, Rob. Uh, that Mac, pretty much. Um, yeah, I know uh, the guy that plays Cricket in It's Always Sunny does a couple episodes as a writer. Yeah, it looks uh, like for David the most. David Hornsby. Yeah, it looks like for the most. Like it looks like the three of them. Charlie, Charlie, Robin, Glenn are always part of it somehow. Yeah, season five the has part. some different names in there. Yeah. Season six has some different names in there as well. Yeah, because 
I don't know, probably at this point they're just... It's... Season 11 does not have the main three on it a lot. <laughs> oh, that's the newest one, right? No. Oh, 12. Oh my goodness, there's a lot more seasons. There's 15. <laughs> I'm not this caught up. I, let's see, when, did I even watch season 10? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't remember the last season I watched. No, I think eight, because uh, Mac and Dennis buy a, a timeshare. Is that the one where they get the house in the suburbs? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, so I think oh, I watched I think, season eight. I think I've watched through to season 13, because the end of season 13 is where um, Mac comes out finally. Okay. Yeah, it's... Uh, You know what? That's thinking about it. Uh, Always Sunny's episode of when they all go to therapy is <laughs> thinking about therapy is a good one. Just like, yeah, my friend gave me fat pills. What? <laughs> you know what? If we if we wanted, uh, we could do the same thing with with Always Sunny. They only got like, let's see, seven, ten. Oh, season three is a long one. Ten. 12, 13, 14. But yeah, I don't know. It looks like it's everywhere between. Oh, wait. It's, it has the number of episodes. I don't have to count the number. Oh, on the number. wiki, yeah. Yeah, so 15, 13, 12, 14. It looks like they're all under. We would never run out. Oh, and then after that, like after season. Seven. It's seven. All it's ten all episodes. 10 episodes. Yeah, I guess uh, if you guys listen to us this far, we appreciate it. And if you would like us to watch and talk about It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I know we've talked about our favorite episodes of It's Always yeah. Sunny in Philadelphia. But if you'd like us to kind of go deep dive into each episode, uh, the early episodes will be very hard to talk about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have heard that the... Um, uh, I saw a TikTok where someone said... You know, all of my friends say they like it's always sunny. So I start from the beginning, and the first episode they say something that I don't agree with in the first five minutes, and I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep." <laughs> and then, and then, nice, nice uh, and, chuckle. and then in the comments they said on the podcast that the the three guys that they regret some of the humor they used in the early seasons. Mm-hmm. I think that's why I think the Always Sunny episodes are only explicit episode. Yeah, checks out because it's hard to talk about any of it um, without bringing up mature themes. Yeah, there was one. There was one other episode that almost we almost gave the explicit title, and I can't remember what it was. Wait, no, I think uh, we also. I can't remember if we gave it to the anime or manga. Oh, uh, one oh, of the couples, the cu anime couples, because some of them have themes in it that yeah. about how they become a couple that are less than. I great. I remember the one I used. And I was like, "There's, I was like, I really like how this couple goes, but I can't recommend everyone reading the comic because it's super dark." Mm. And uh, I don't know with a with a title as Suicide Island. It's like. <laughs> Kind of paints the picture. <laughs> That's true. Uh, but yeah, so if uh, you can always reach out to us on Twitter at twitter.com slash pointless disco, which seems to like me more than D Pain. Call back. <laughs> um, if you reach out it's to like us. It's like the whole internet. Everyone likes hot more than D Pain. <laughs> but I've been hiding from the internet. This That's is your why. chance. <laughs> That's why they like you more. They're like, come back. Um, yeah, if you send us a met, uh, our DM should be open on there. So if you send us something on there to let us know that you'd be interested in hearing us ramble about how funny we find anti-humor, uh, <laughs> <laughs> let us know. Otherwise, uh, you could follow that Twitter page for updates on upcoming episodes. You, uh, if you interact with us on there, you will get shout outs. If you like hearing your names said on a podcast, that's one way to do it. Another mm -hmm. way is to leave us a rating or review and actually write something. Because otherwise it comes up anonymous. And we want to thank you, but we don't know mm -hmm. how to. So thanks to the two anonymous five stars we've gotten. Is it only yeah. two? Is there more? Yes. I Unless it changed while we were talking. Okay. Uh, but thank you to you. And then triple appreciate if you send us to friends, enemies, lovers, uh, family, 
uh, evil villains, uh, your DM, your um, other someone... single people. Like that. They, yeah, how, they, some... everyone forgets them. That person in <laughs> high school who keeps sending you links to MLMs to join. <laughs> I had someone invite me to two different groups because I was they requested me on Facebook and I was like so, as someone I know still talks to like the person's husband and I was like all right fine it can't be that weird I've at least kind of talked to them in the last like few years mm -hmm. and then I immediately get requests to join two groups and I was like mm -hmm. I regret I... this <laughs> the Homer Simpson meme just back into, <laughs> into the, the bushes, bushes. <laughs> Um, anyone else for people to send our podcast to? I think I counted like seven. Um, yeah. I was just thinking of other people we could thank. Um, TFT, we, I really like set seven, the little bit I played of it. Um, dragons. Yeah. Except when the person you're playing with steals the one dragon you're <laughs> looking for. Not dragon. <laughs> yeah. Or when you do an anti-dragon build, and then it, everyone else decides to be like, no, nah, we're not going to do dragons. <laughs> I was like, R really? I personally this did time. this to fight you, <laughs> you jerks. So then, uh, I guess, mini announcement. Do you have everything sorted out for some plans for something, your big event of the summer? Uh, yeah, that's next month. Um, yeah, there's... I just gotta ask people now. That I meant to do that yesterday, but then I was working on, well, I guess a big announcement for the October. <laughs> it, there's, there's that's that's the life of deep pain right now. There's like five projects I'm working on, <laughs> and they're all really cool to me. But, Any uh, of them you're ready to share yet? Or are you still uh, working out some details? Um, I don't know. The one I've shared multiple times. I'm doing a Call of Cthulhu podcast. Ooh. So. That's uh, pretty much, that will be coming out, because um, for anyone that doesn't know, normally I stream all my D&D &D and on, on YouTube, oh, sorry, not on YouTube, on my Twitch. But it does uh, get uploaded to YouTube, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but this one, like, mm -hmm. I've been wanting to do something specifically for YouTube, and I was like, the more and more I was looking at the story, I was like, this would make a pretty interesting podcast. So, uh, yeah, that will be something, hopefully in October, I think we're going to start recording this month. And by this month, I mean Wednesday. I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to double check. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, we're record recording. I'm <laughs> recording super <laughs> early. Uh, so that way I can hopefully get episodes lined up and ready to go for October. Uh, and that should be fun. If, uh, as I say, Hop gets the brunt of my creative out, like, vomit. And so she is. I don't think you're uh, a stranger to. I heard one sentence and now this. <laughs> That's pretty much <laughs> how this whole um, Call of Cthulhu podcast went. <laughs> it's just I heard one sentence and then wrote a 10 chapter um, campaign. Yeah. That's why I was like, let me let you decide what you're going to announce because I know you have yeah. a lot of stuff. Well, there's in the Charity works. Palooza, but like Charity Palooza is every year, but I, I don't have names and, and stuff for that yet. There's there's only one person I asked because I know they mentioned their schedule. They might be on this call, but <laughs> who could it be? I can't find anybody else here. It's the bunnies. <laughs> he was right next to me. I think he's gone back to eat food, so he's Man. he's busy. I'll take a. Uh, I'm his secretary. I'll take oh, okay. a. I, what do they call it? It's it's not a note. A note. Uh, I don't know. I never was a secretary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I know they all get mad at me. <laughs> But, uh, but yes, uh, of the many projects of Deep Pain in this, um, thanks. My brain died because now my brain went back to dragons. <laughs> and I was like, I want to hit him with a sword. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Bye!